So now we are ready to render our video. We've compiled everything, all of our text, our footage, and uh, got all of our fades and all of our audio working the way exactly how we planned it to be and looking pretty much like our example video. So let's go render this stuff. So with our comp selected, which is our time fighters right here, you want to go to composition, add to render queue. And you can always have a trillion bajillion render queues, and it'll just go through like a list. But typically, people will just do it one at a time. We want to right before we do anything for rendering, we want to save. So let's just uh, do a really quick save. We had saved it previously as After Effects, uh, the AE demo. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a very good saver, but I do save right before you render, and generally when everything's chugging. <laughs> so the first thing you'll notice on this really not very friendly uh, rendering menu is uh, these tiny little text and all this stuff. So right now, if you look closely, it says output to timefighters.avi. It's just naming it after the comp that it was being rent that's being rendered out. And the output mode means lossless, which you don't want, because if not, you're going to make like a, a trillion gig file. And uh, you kind of don't want that. So let's click on output module first. And <clears throat> it brings up, <clears throat> excuse me, it brings up this output module settings. And uh, the first thing that pops up is video for, video for Windows, which is an AVI format. I'm going to stick with QuickTime because QuickTime, QuickTime is pretty darn universal. It gets everywhere. Um, everyone has it. Everyone can use it. And um, unless you know, unless your computer is before 1987, I think, is when QuickTime first came out. Anyway, so let's go even further. So channels, depth, and color. You don't really want to mess with this for now. Uh, these are more advanced settings and post render action none. Don't uh, just leave these kind of clicked. I don't even know what they'd really do, seriously. But uh, on the output file, video output, what we want to change and examine is the format option. So let's click that. And uh, right now, your compression type, it's, it's different for every format that you use. But because we're using QuickTime, probably the most universal format for video, uh, we're going to go in here. And I choose Sorensen 3 as uh, my default for compression type. And let's cancel this right quick. There's a really quick lesson on uh, video codecs back in the day. Uh, so, uh, the reason I choose Sorensen 3 over other formats that are really popular, such as H.264 or uh, MP4, is because Sorensen 3 and H.264 probably are the most universal right now. Everyone can play them. They're great compression. You're not going to make a trillion gigs on your video. Um, I'm choosing Sorensen Video 3 over H.264 purposely because H.264 creates really gross output from After Effects and it washes out a bunch of your colors and you generally don't want it visually. So let's stick with Sorensen 3. If you do not have Sorensen 3, there's a really quick fix for it. Sorensen is an old school, it's, a, it's what's called a legacy video codec and it's been accepted everywhere and it's been implemented by QuickTime forever. So in case you don't have it available to you into the in the format options, you want to go into QuickTime you should have a QuickTime player if you're working with After Effects. Anyway, um, it says welcome to QuickTime. We'll close this. It's going to load some junk. And then we're going to go to v Edit, Preferences, QuickTime Preferences. And uh, this is all great and nice and stuff. Uh, we're going to go to Advance over here. And all the way at the second to the last thing is Media Encoding. And then you're going to enable encoding using legacy codecs. You can just make sure that this is checked. Hit apply and OK. And what that does is it tells your entire computer system and anything that's using video that it can read and write using the Sorensen video format. And that's available regardless if you have QuickTime Pro or QuickTime Not Pro. I don't know, UnPro? <laughs> QuickTime Unprofessional, that's what you have. Anyway, so we'll change this to Sorensen 3. If you can't. Um, H.264 is another universal, universally accepted format. Um, you can use it here if you want, but you're going to see that you're gonna, there's going to be a, a significant difference. And Sorensen 3 has its own problems uh, in terms of like video quality, but uh, H.264 I think is a little bit more problematic. But it's also universal and okay. Let's, for example, let's use the H.264 and hit OK. You want your quality generally at high, unless you're going to be outputting to a DVD or whatever. Then you want best, and that's when you're your format is really huge. You certainly want to stay away from the animation pack on it. Animation um, is completely unnecessary. It creates a bunch of metadata that chugs everything, and, and it ha and it doesn't even matter. Um, it's really kind of funny. And so let's stick with source. And let's let's do H.264 as an example because people will be using that. Hit OK, and you're getting an error first off. It says for reliable whatever. 
just plow through it and leave that settings as that. But we're going to be using Sorensen for now. So let's go switch over, keep it at high, and then go to OK. And the other thing that we're going to check on here is our audio, because we do have audio on here. So we want audio output. Now, here's a huge problem that you need to fix uh, before you start rendering. Adobe After Effects' default audio output happens at 48 kilohertz, 48 point blah, blah, blah kilohertz and that's a really high compression I mean that's a lot of that's a huge high data uh, rate and it will unsync everything in your video file unless all your files are 48 uh, kilohertz or above and they're typically not it's a very atypical format um, it's gonna create audio lag so what you want to make sure is for sure you have it at 44.1 kilohertz um, and generally all your audio will be synced up perfectly if not you're gonna get an error and you're gonna be like what I just spent like a million years doing this and I hate my life because uh, it broke everything so you wanna make sure your audio output is at 44.1 or else you're gonna get some sort of weird lag and we're gonna hit OK on that and it and so we've adjusted the output module and this output 2 is where you're gonna name your file it will typically just be named uh, timefighters.mov and uh, I have it saved to where my footage was saved in my tutorials folder. Hit save there. You can save it anywhere you want on the desktop too. And then the next thing you're just going to hit is render. Going to hit render. Or we're hitting render right now. And what After Effects is doing right now as it renders is just putting together all the images and stuff. But this is where having like a lot of special effects on layers will come into play. We only have the blur on the Time Fighters text right there. But if you have a bunch of other effects like blur and and uh, crazy lens flares and other lighting effects, it will really chug your render time. And, and it still does chug because it's going every frame and applying that to all the layers and all these tweaks and animations. And then you want the sound. It's the most marvelous sound in the world and it makes you feel very good. And so we've rendered at our movie from there with all of our stuff. And let's take a look at it right here. It's called timefighters.mov and there's our example. Let's click on it, double click on it. Really manageable file size, I think it's 24. If you have QuickTime Pro, you can save it out, export it for web, and it compresses it even further, and it does a really, really good job of making it tiny and still look good too. So here, we're gonna hit play. And there you have it. You've created your first uh, video in After Effects, and you've got some pretty darn good results. You can scrub through this. And so what we did is we brought in different forms of footage, which is uh, still images, live images. We added text over it. We've uh, animated the text so that way it comes in gracefully, or sort of gracefully. <laughs> and uh, we've faded out and added in our own soundtrack. And so that should give you a really good heads up on how to use After Effects, and I hope this tutorial helped, and we'll see you around for another tutorial. Take it easy.